Hi there, I'd just like to do a um, real quick demonstration of some short division um, methods, also some skills, okay, and some things that we need to look out for. So the top one says 11 divided by 4. Uh, this is really simple because I, I want to show something else to start with. So if you were to write this, okay, we have the 11 goes under the bus stop, so this is called bus stop method, and the 4 is on the outside. Okay, so the 4 is the divisor, the 11 is the dividend, and the answer will be the quotient. So, dividend, divisor, answer is the quotient. Okay, so this is just really simple. So, we all know uh, the 4 times table, 4, 8, we can't do a third jump to 12 because we don't have 12, there's 11. So, 4, 8 gives us two jumps. Okay, but this is what I want to focus on, this one is why it's quite a simple is remainder. Now traditionally we had been told to just put whatever's left over, the remainder, just put it there. So 4, 8, yeah, that's our two jumps of 4, so if we've got 8, the difference between 8 and 11 is 3, so we were been told to just put 3. However, um, 3 is just a bit of an abstract number because if it's 3 out of 4, that's quite a large chunk. Because it's not far away from getting another jump of four, is it? But if it was remainder three, but we, our divisor was 100, well, three parts out of 100 is nowhere near a whole, is it? So just putting three loses um, any understanding of that, that, what that value, what that three actually represents. This is three parts left over when we were dividing by four. Like I said, if it was three parts and we were dividing, our divisor was 100, that's such a sm small um, value. So what you do... Your, what is your remainder becomes your numerator and your divisor, divisor becomes your denominator. So now it's remainder three quarters. Uh, just take that one step further. So I'm especially looking sort of year six onwards. If I just draw that again over here, our divisor four, dividend 11, quotient will come up here. I'm just gonna do this again. We know that's two. But if you wanted to, you could do decimals straight away. So put a decimal point in. Okay, decimal point. Um, four, we had, we were, four into 11 goes twice with three left over. Okay, there's nothing here. So mathematically, we could call that zero. So now we've got 30. Four, fours into 30. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. That's seven jumps. It's 28 and we had 30, so the difference between 28 and 30 is 2. So that can carry on. I'm just going to continue my bus stop there. There's n nothing here again, so we put a 0. 4s into 20 go 5 times. So if you want to be really accurate, 4 divided by 11 is 2.75. However, in primary school, um, having a fraction remainder, a fractional remainder, is perfectly fine, okay, but just be aware of making them as simple as possible if you can. Obviously, three quarters can't be simplified any further. But there's just a demonstration on how to turn um, your remainders into your, um, you can get decimal remainders if you want to be really, really accurate. Um, some number fours are great because they will eventually become, they will just stop there. I've got no more, so fours into 20 go five times, there's nothing left over, so I stop working. However, other digits will just keep going, okay. So once you see a pattern of these digits repeating, that's called recurring, you can stop because it just means it's going to repeat itself over and over again, don't waste your time. So now we're going to look at uh, 435 divided by 3. We would use short division here, which is this method here with bus stop, um, because we're dividing by a, a single digit, our divisor is a single digit, so it, it just sort of makes it, um, make, 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 makes more sense to do short, short division rather than long. So again, I'm going to draw out the question. So my, our divisor is 3, our dividend is 435, that goes under the bus stop. The quotient uh, is the answer above it. So first step, let me turn to black. First step we're going to look at is how many 3's go into 4? Four? 4 divided by 3, so it's a 3 times table. Everything is really important now. Your divisor's times table is really important. So 3, 6, 9, 12, okay? Really get from that in. Three, six, we can't do two jumps because that would take us to six. We've only got four. So we can do one jump of three. So one jump of three, so that one jump gets registered in the quotient. Okay, and we did one jump of three 
left, uh, one times three is three. We had four, so the difference between three and four is one. So that is what is exchanged. That one is exchanged for 10 over here. I'm now just gonna draw this pictorially. We go back a step. I just want to show you that step pictorially so you understand where I'm getting those digits from. What I'm gonna do is just put four dots here to represent the four here. I'm now, in my red pen, gonna go back, sorry, and turn them into groups of three. There's one group of three, and I quite clearly cannot get another group of three out. So how many groups of three have I got? One. If I go up to one, one group of three. Now, I have this one, from that four, remained and one left over. So that needs to be exchanged into the next column. Okay, and children in class, what is the exchange rate? It's always 10 or one, okay? Or one for 10, depending on what you're doing. So this is, we're doing one for 10 in the next column, okay, with, uh, with this. So let me, in black, I'm gonna draw out the three original ones, one, two, three, to represent the three there. But now, in my green pen, We've got this one that's been exchanged for 10 in here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I quite clearly now have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 in here. So that is where, when I said there was that one left over, and I popped the exchanged one for 10 up here, I made the number 13, and here it is. So let's go back to groupings of three, because that's what, that's what our divisor is. One group two, three, four. So I've got one, two, three, four groups, four complete groups up there. I've got one left over, so I can't make another group of three. So my four groups are there. <clears throat> I've got this one left over again, so it's exactly the same process as before. That one left over is exchanged for 10 in the next column. So let me just draw the five that I would have had in there. One, two, three, four, five. There's the five in black to represent the five that's there. But we have got this exchanged one, one for 10, okay, in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So in total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 in this column. So now this one, if we're just using digits, this one left over, so three, 13 here divided by three. We've got uh, three, six, nine, 12, that's our four jumps. So we got to 12, we had 13, the difference between 13 to 12, 12 to 13, the difference is one, that's where that one comes from. So if I was doing this purely abstract, I would exchange the one remaining remainder sorry, for 10 in the next column, and that's where I get my 15 from. So let's go back to groups of three again, because that's what our divisor is. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got five, one, two, three, four, five. Five groups, complete groups, and that goes into the quotient up there. There are none, no numbers left over, no dots left over. Okay, we, if we're doing this abstract, you would do 15 divided by three, or counting your three times tables to 15, three, six, nine, 12, 15, there's my five jumps. That becomes part of your, the, uh, the quotient, and there's nothing left over because I've used all 15, so there you go. 435 divided by three is 145. All that is is just a pictorial representation of where I'm getting these one, okay, one, one for 10 exchanging. If I take this a little bit uh, larger into a four digit number, there's my bus stop. Here's the dividend. And here is the div divisor. So I'm gonna do this purely abstract, but talk through each step. Everything that's going through my head. Okay, so we're going to start with seven and one, so one divided by seven. Clearly, common mistake here, children will do the other way around. They'll do seven divided by one, and they'll think it's seven, but it's not. It is one divided by seven. So the first jump of seven is obviously up to seven. We can't do that, so you could put a zero, okay? 
So 7 times 0 is 0. That was our answer. The difference between 0 and 1 is 1. So I'm going to exchange that 1 that's left over for 10 in the next column. So it makes 16. Quick shortcut of that is, is if, there's, if the child spots that, obviously, seven divi uh, 1 divided by 7 can't be done, and it's the first column, we'll just, just put that 1, that's whatever digit's in here, if it can't be done, straight on to the next digit. Just saves a couple of seconds, but it doesn't matter if you want to do it the full, um, full way like this. So now I've got 16 because of that 1 that I've exchanged from here. So now in my 7, 7, 14, can't go to 21, so 14 is two jumps. Seven times two was 14. The difference between 14 and 16 is two. So difference is a take away. The difference is two. So that two is exchanged for 20 in the next column. This exchange rate is always one for 10. So if obviously if I've got two, I'm going to exchange it for 20. If I've got three left uh, remainder, I'm going to exchange it for 30. So now I've got 28. Now I can do my 7s in 28 divided by 7, or 7s into 28. 7, 14, 21, 28. Lovely. It works exactly. That was four jumps. Four sets of 7 can fit into 28. Nothing left over, so I've got nothing to exchange. I've used all of those 28. So now I've got 2 divided by 7. 2 divided by 7 you can't do because the first jump of 7 is, is 7, so obviously I can't do that. So there are no whole jumps. 7 times 0 is 0. The difference between 2 and 0, I mean, I know this is obvious, is 2. There's no more digits to calculate here, so this becomes your remainder. Now remember, the actual remainder is your numerator, and your divisor is your denominator. So 1,628 divided by 7 is 240, remainder 2 sevenths. Okay, I hope that helps.